My friends, the global response to Trump's victory is nothing short of seismic. Within hours, literally hours of Trump's win, Hamas called for peace. Putin announced Russia's ready to restore relations. The Iranian-backed Houthis declared a ceasefire. Steve Madden is halting Chinese manufacturing. Even the Chinese media is buzzing about Trump's crypto plans. But here's what's really stunning. All of this is happening before he's even taking office. This isn't just diplomatic posturing, patriots. This is what real strength looks like. The world isn't just watching, it is realigning. And yes, Donald Trump has a plan to dismantle the deep state. And as global powers scramble to adjust to Trump's victory, smart Americans are adjusting their financial strategies too, just like leaders recognizing America's renewed strength. Savvy investors are recognizing the power of precious metals. With international markets in flux and our national debt soaring past $35 trillion, so if you have funds sitting in a low interest bank account or 401k IRA retirement account, you need to call my friends at Global Gold Investments, America's leading conservative precious metals dealer, and receive absolutely free their new 2024 Protect Your Wealth and Retirement Guide. Call that number on the screen, 888-700-4148, and mention Next News and receive their five-star customer treatment, along with a complimentary portfolio analysis. Operators are standing by, so write that number down. 888-700-4148, or just visit iragoldproof.com. It's linked down below. Remember, if you don't have gold, then you don't have wealth. Okay, so the big news right now, before we get into some of the international relations, is Donald Trump has now officially released his plan to dismantle the deep state. Let's listen. I will ask Congress, here's my plan to dismantle the deep state and reclaim our democracy from Washington corruption once and for all, and corruption it is. First, I will immediately reissue my 2020 executive order restoring the president's authority to remove rogue bureaucrats, and I will wield that power very aggressively. Second, we will clean out all of the corrupt actors in our national security and intelligence apparatus, and there are plenty of them. The departments and agencies that have been weaponized will be completely overhauled so that faceless bureaucrats will never again be able to target and persecute conservatives, Christians, or the left's political enemies, which they're doing now at a level that nobody can believe even possible. Third, we will totally reform FISA courts, which are so corrupt that the judges seemingly do not care when they are lied to in warrant applications. So many judges have seen so many applications that they know were wrong, or at least they must have known. They do nothing about it. They're lied to. Fourth, to expose the hoaxes and abuses of power that have been tearing our country apart, we will establish a Truth and Reconciliation Commission to declassify and publish all documents on deep state spying, censorship, and corruption. And there are plenty of them. Fifth, we will launch a major crackdown on government leakers who collude with the fake news to deliberately weave false narratives and to subvert our government and our democracy. When possible, we will press criminal charges. Sixth, we will make every inspector general's office independent and physically separated from the departments they oversee so they do not become the protectors of the deep state. Seventh, I will ask Congress to establish an independent auditing system to continually monitor our intelligence agencies to ensure they are not spying on our citizens or running disinformation campaigns against the American people, or that they are not spying on someone's campaign like they spied on my campaign. Eighth, we will continue the effort launched by the Trump administration to move parts of the sprawling federal bureaucracy to new locations outside the Washington swamp. Just as I moved the Bureau of Land Management to Colorado, as many as 100,000 government positions could be moved out, and I mean immediately, of Washington to places filled with patriots who love America, and they really do love America. Ninth, I will work to ban federal bureaucrats from taking jobs at the companies they deal with and that they regulate. So they deal with these companies and they regulate these companies and then they want to take jobs from these companies. Doesn't work that way. Such a public 
display did not go on and is taking place all the time like with Big Pharma. Finally, I will push a constitutional amendment to impose term limits on members of Congress. This is how I will shatter the deep state and restore government that is controlled by the people and for the people. Thank you very much. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. The deep state is trembling. Now we're learning that with potential Trump tariffs on the horizon, Taiwan says it will help its companies relocate production out of China. Yes, it is coming. We have this reaction. A former White House staffer says Kamala Harris' actions following her loss last night to Donald Trump was classless and reveals that she's a sore loser. Her name is Barbara Heinbach. Listen to what she has to say. All of Hollywood and... Let's cross now to Barbara Heinbach, former Democrat White House staffer, joining us live from Brisbane. Barbara, do you feel any disappointment that Kamala Harris hasn't been oh able to God. become the first... <laughs> um, woman of color and first woman to be elected to the presidency. I am so disappointed and really insulted. I'm a Howard alum and that she didn't have the decency to walk out and say something to her, you know, to her university, make a comment to the United States. Things were not looking well for her. It wasn't completely over, but short of a miracle, we knew which way this was going. And that she didn't have some grace. I mean, it it shows us how classless she actually is, a sore loser. And even though it's painful for her, for the Democrats, I think America might be relieved at recognizing and realizing they don't have to put up with this any longer. And if this is what they were walking into, maybe it's better that it gets, you know, cut at the nip right now. Well, but, she, um, she's such me, a poor I'm candidate, Barbara. Yeah. She's such a poor candidate. Of course, she was a pr surprise pick uh, for vice president as the running mate for Joe Biden. But he said he was going to pick a woman of colour and she got the gig. She's never won an election of any substance. This would have been the first one if she did. Didn't get a vote when she mm -hmm. contested the primaries. Uh, why do you think she's failed? What was the biggest mistake of the Democrat campaign? The biggest mistake was her not selecting Shapiro. I mean, she had an ace, you know, an ace in the hole, and she didn't take that. Shapiro is so well respected, liked. He's doing an incredible job in Pennsylvania. And the reason she didn't take it is another part of that personality that, you know, eked through. She is so completely insecure that she could not have someone that bright around her to upstage her and outshine her. And so this is why she didn't select him, I'm pretty sure. She made a lot of mistakes by bringing on all of Hollywood and Beyonce and all yeah. of these people. But they always do that. Beyonce wasn't very happy. They well, always Beyonce do that. Beyonce wasn't happy. Yeah, it's it's pathetic. Mm -hmm. Now, now you know the Democrats. You're connected to them. You've worked in the White House for Democrat presidents. So tell us what they're going to go through. I want to I want to make a point here. She says she didn't want Shapiro as VP because he would outshine her. No, I think we really know why. She did not want to upset the Hamas wing of her party. Right. Anyway, let's continue. In coming days, they may lose the House and the Senate as well. They may have gone backwards in the House and, and lose the Senate. Um, a, a very, very dark uh, day for the Democrats. Do you expect them to learn? Do you expect serious recriminations? Um, one of the things I noticed is, that, or I really believe is going to happen, is that, you know, oh, we have to remember that Obama and Michelle did not come out to endorse her for about more than a week, about 10 days after all of the other elite Democrats did, Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, all of the others. But they didn't come out. And Obama really wanted to have a proper, you know, go through the process of the primary and everything, let the Democratic National Committee choose and select who they really wanted for a candidate. Obama has been telling people all along, 
before she became vice president not to do this and not to jump to that Willie Brown as well, who, you know, the, who had been the mayor of San Francisco, said, give her a position somewhere, but not VP. Not so VP. people closer to her knew what was, um, you know, coming on. And so she they didn't listen to that. The Congress, I don't know which way it's going to go, but I think that um, if we have a couple more Republicans in the Senate to carry us through these next four years. But I think it's going to be easier for Trump than it was, you know, back in 2016. But he also has to make sure he doesn't put uh, that that the Republicans, the establishment, the rhinos don't put any roadblocks in his path because the establishment's going to fight back. The deep state's going to fight back. They're going to try to put all these roadblocks in place. And we're hearing whispers that it's already beginning to happen. And then we have this beautiful headline, Hamas calling for immediate end to war after the Trump election win. And, of course, you have this gaslighting directly from the White House, the Corinne Jean-Pierre saying that Biden is leaving behind the strongest economy. So assured him that he would. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Good to welcome back to some of you out there who are on the trail. Good to see you all. Oh, no, no. I, I want to see Alex Jones walk out there. That's what I want to see. Okay, sorry. Okay, as you just heard from the president, President Biden, he spoke with President-elect Trump to congratulate him on his victory. He also assured him that he would direct his entire administration to work with his team to ensure a peaceful and orderly transition of power. That is what the American people deserve. He also spoke with the vice president to congratulate her on a historic, inspiring campaign. And for some people, (laughs) a historic loss. That's what she means. It's so funny when I see her walk out there and she starts spouting this stuff. You know that there's very different conversations happening in those back rooms. Very different. This is all just, you know, window dressing because that's all she's been providing this White House is just cover election is a time of victory and others uh, it's a time of loss to state the obvious tuesday's night's results were not our team's desired outcome there's going to be a a lot of uh, post uh, post-mortem analysis of what happened in the coming days in the coming weeks even in the coming months and so i'm going to leave those look 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 <laughs> we all know what happened you guys forced Biden out. You picked a, a horrible candidate to run. The Democrat base was demoralized because you cast them aside. You cast their votes aside. You're screaming about, you know, Trump's going to destroy democracy. Well, you guys all just destroyed it because you destroyed everyone's vote. And the people didn't turn out because you stabbed them all in the back. That's what happened questions to the election experts, uh, that is certainly not my role uh, today. But what you heard from President Biden is that the struggle for the soul of America since our very founding crosses generations and is always ongoing and it is still important today. The president and the vice president accept the choice the country has made. And because the president has said this many times, you heard him say this uh, moments ago in the Rose Garden, you can't love your country only when you win, and you can't love your neighbor only when you agree. The president also spoke to the importance of the integrity of the American election system. It's honest, it's fair, and it's transparent. (laughs) Unless it's 2020 and you question it. It can be trusted whether you win or you lose. The president and vice president are proud to be leaving behind the strongest economy in the world. And the president and the vice president. Well, I mean, yeah, the American economy is the strongest economy in the world, but under Joe Biden, they destroyed it. Yeah, even when you destroy the world's best economy, it's still better than everybody. So, yeah, there is some truth to what she's saying, but she's not admitting the facts underneath it. President are proud to have change America for the better. Okay, whatever. Enough of you. Enough of you. 
Donald Trump has been president-elect for not even two days. Steve Madden is halting manufacturing in China by half in a year. Hamas calls for an end to the war in the Middle East. The Iran, Iran-backed Houthis announced a ceasefire. Putin said he's ready to work towards peace. Oh, yes, it is happening, my friends. But the president of Mexico won't recognize Trump as president until all the votes are counted. Oh, yeah. Guess what, honey? The wall just got five feet taller. Buenos dias a todos, a todas. Están pues las noticias de que ganó el presidente Trump, pero de todas maneras nosotros... We're going to wait today for the vote count to end in some states before we issue an official statement. Um... I hate to break it to you, but it's over. We won. So just accept it and make sure that you listen to the remain in Mexico policy. Okay. How about that? Or else the wall is going to get 10 feet taller. And we've got this Chinese media is reporting on Donald Trump's plan to make the U.S. the world's crypto capital and establish a strategic Bitcoin reserve. This is coming out of China, a strategic Bitcoin reserve. Where's Bitcoin right now? Last I checked, it was at like it hit 77,000 today, which is an all time high. I'm going to say now people have been saying that Bitcoin is going to hit, uh, you know, a million or something at some point. But right now, as of this report, it is 76,000. $136.74. That is where Bitcoin is. And as of today, it hit a high of $77,000. And it is only going to keep going up if news like this continues. We also have this information. The U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin has sent out a memo to troops where he said the American military was committed to an orderly transition to the Trump administration, adding the military would not get involved in politics and was ready to carry out all lawful orders. Well, you got a new commander in chief, buddy. Donald Trump Jr. celebrating that Hamas headline from Newsweek, saying it took about 12 hours after my father's election win for Hamas to call for peace. Donald Trump isn't even president and he's already getting it done. Spectacular. This from the Spectator Index, Putin says Russia is ready to restore relations with the United States. Russian President Vladimir Putin says Russia is not abandoning the U.S. dollar. Also, Shadow of Ezra, this is huge. Vladimir Putin declared the death of the New World Order just two days after the election results and a day after Elon Musk's cryptic Novus Ordo Socorum tweet. Putin says the New World Order is a thing of the past. The moment of truth is approaching. Listen to this. It's a clash. To a certain extent, the moment of, of truth is coming. The previous world order is irreversibly becoming a thing of the past. One could say has become a thing of the past. And the shaping of the new world order is become the scene of uncompromising fight. Uncompromising, first and foremost, for the reason that it's not even the battle for power or geopolitical influence. It's a clash of the very principles that would be the foundation between the relation, you know, for the relation of the countries at the next historical stage. And its outcome will define whether all of us jointly can build a world that would allow everyone to develop and to solve the outstanding contradictions based on mutual respect of cultures and civilization without coercion and use of force. Wow, that is huge. That coming from Vladimir Putin. And this from Bowtied Mara. Joe Biden is super sharp all of a sudden. Yeah, he's got a little spring in his step now. Him and Jill probably voted for Donald Trump. And they're glad that Kamala didn't win. That's not hyperbole. Yeah, it's good to see you all. Particularly good to see my granddaughter sitting in the front row here. Hi, Finn. How are you, honey? For over 200 years, 
America has carried on the greatest experiment in self-government in the history of the world. And that's not hyperbole, that's a fact. We're the people. The people vote and choose their own leaders and they do it peacefully. And we're in a democracy, the will of the people always prevails. Yesterday, I spoke with President-elect Trump to congratulate him on his victory. And I assured him that I would direct my entire administration to work with his team to ensure a peaceful and orderly transition. That's what the American people deserve. Yesterday, I also spoke with Vice President Harris. She's been a partner and a public servant. She ran an inspiring campaign and everyone got to see something that I learned early on to respect so much, her character. She has a backbone like a ramrod. She has great character, true character. She gave her whole heart and effort, and she and her entire team should be proud of the campaign they ran. <laughs> yeah, he does sound a little, uh, a little clear, doesn't he? Yeah, he's probably getting a lot of rest. I, I, from what I hear, he's just uh, eating ice cream and watching Netflix, not doing very much. <laughs> Isn't that weird? Like, he sounded really good there. Uh, and this this was actually pretty cool. I saw this today. I wanted to share this with you. It's a little behind the scenes of Tucker Carlson's uh, new series on the Tucker Carlson Network. It's called Art of the Surge. Now, Tucker Carlson had unprecedented access to bring his cameras right into the inner sanctum of Trump's circle. And in this clip, you're going to see how Trump making his tweets. And uh, as he's watching Kamala Harris at the Democrat National Convention, this is remarkable behind the scenes footage that uh, you can only see at the Tucker Carlson Network. So this was put out. This apparently must be some kind of teaser. And let's watch it. It's beautiful. Oh, Is she crazy? Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Oh, too many thank yous. It's about 20. I must be 35. She's traveling from India That's to good. California with an unshakable dream to be the scientist. How many people are watching? At home. Can we tell how many, Dan? Sure. How many people are watching? She's talking about how great San Francisco was before she destroyed it. A lot of talk about childhood. We've got to get to the border, inflation, and crime. Take Cindy's out. The things of which she complains. The things of which she complains. In many ways, Donald Trump is an unserious man. Oh. You hear that, it's great, right? Well, the Ready? These prosecutions were all started by her and Biden against their political the opponents. Me. Get that out right away. She paid and raised bail. She paid bail to get the violent yeah. rioters in Minnesota out of jail. Tim Waltz let Minnesota burn. Come on, let's put it the matches. Put it in there. Put it right in with the stuff, huh? With that post, yeah. You would use the yeah. But you could do it either that or separate. You say yeah. more yeah. lies, lying about the Project 2025. Oh, lying against Project 25, which she knows, and so do all Democrats, that I have not, that I have absolutely nothing to do with. Lying about She says we all know that she determines. <laughs> He's dictating his true social posts in real time, reacting to Kamala Harris. How cool is that? You know, you never get to see this side of Trump. You always, you know, there's always the, the speeches and the rallies and, you know, the press conferences. But very rarely do you ever really get to see him in a casual environment just you know sitting in the back of the room watching with everybody else and he's dictating his his posts it's the coolest thing 
that's just a small teaser from the art of the surge available at Tucker Carlson's network. Wow. That's gotta be one heck of a series to watch. So, so many great things are happening on the international stage, the domestic stage that, uh, it's only going to get better. So the international chessboard has been completely upended from the Middle East to Moscow, from Beijing to the European capitals, to the halls of Washington in the deep state. World leaders are rapidly repositioning themselves for the Trump era. Even Mexico's reluctance to acknowledge the victory shows just how deeply this election has shaken the global establishment. The old world isn't just changing, it's being fundamentally transformed. So here's what I want to know from you. Which international reaction, or even the deep state's reaction to Trump's victory surprised you the most, and why? Share your insights in the comments below.